right, hello everybody. Welcome to another DC Cap E sessions. Uh, this is our monthly event series where we feature success stories and partner insights into strategy and growth in e-commerce. My name is Catherine and I work with the marketing team and the partner manager at DC Cap. Um, today we're going to be featuring some special guests. Uh, we're going to have Scoge speaking about their company's journey into B2B. <clears throat> we'll have Dev Digital speaking about five marketing channels you need to prioritize as well as DC Cap's own uh, Sivar and Johnny speaking about quality assurance and ADA compliance and how that plays into design. And we're very excited by the great tips and insights they'll be sharing here today. Along with that digital, DC Cap is privileged to be a partner with Scoach on their digital journey. And you can also watch more of our e-sessions on our DC Cap events page. Um, and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're always up by uploading videos like this to our channel. And of course, we'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Scoach and Doc Digital in particular for sponsoring the event with us. Um, and partners like them certainly help make it possible to host these educational sessions each month. And you can find out more about them at scoach.com and .digital.com, as well as us at dccap.com. And move on then, and next we have uh, uh, Dan Griffin, uh, Alliances and Business uh, Development Leader at Dot Digital, and he's coming on to present on five marketing channels you need to prioritize. Uh, Dan is a 20-year MarTech and CRM industry veteran. He has worked delivering business outcomes with customer experience and CRM technologies with some of the most recognized brands in the world. He's responsible for Dot Digital's partner ecosystem in the Americas focused on revenue expansion and helping partners deliver incredible outcomes for their shared customers. Welcome, Dan, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Kathy. Really appreciate you having us. Um, my name is Dan Griffin. I'm the head of partnerships for Dot Digital. I'm going to turn my camera off, but I wanted to definitely be here and say hi. Um, but we're going to talk about, as we talk about accessibility and we listen to Scotia's digital transformation, we want to talk a little bit about how marketing automation, channels within marketing automation, and those two pieces come into play from an accessibility perspective. We're going to put a little bit of a 2020 um, revisionist history spin on this. Uh, probably most of the, the guidance and the pieces that you, you've listened to about sales and digital and marketing automation have been a lot about you know, what's happened in our worlds as business leaders, as software providers, as services providers, kind of how do these things, um, like a pandemic, start to change the way we do some things. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to kill my video right now. So you bear with me here are, you know, what channels can you use in kind of the, not the new year, because, you know, we are a few months into the new year, but what channels you should you prioritize this year and even going forward in this rapidly changing digital uh, arena that we're all playing in? And, and most importantly, how do we drop back to what we just talked about was being accessible and ADA standards and understanding that portions of your audience um, aren't always on the same form factor, don't always have the same site capabilities. Uh, oftentimes, maybe folks are relying on a screen reader. So we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of that in as well. But you know, as the title suggests, it, there's probably a little bit of a, a generalization uh, from a title, but what we're going to do is drop down into these five tactics specific to omni-channel marketing with a, with a touch of this accessibility and uh, ADA and disability kind of sprinkled in throughout the way. And, you know, like I shared, 2020 is different for, for everyone. And you could argue we were all dealt a tough hand. Um, from a sales plus marketing perspective in the, digital per, in the digital realm, it accelerated everything. So the speed to digital went to the moon in terms of new websites, capabilities being deployed. And that was all led by end, end consumers, whether it be a B2B buying team or a B2B individual consumer on a retail site. This was all led because of the rapid acceleration to people staying at home and being more digitally connected. So if in 2021, you didn't take 2020 to build a strong online presence, have the means to communicate with your audiences in the exact way that they want to be spoken to when they want to you know, receive that content, you're going to be playing from behind. You're not going to lose out because there's absolutely technology that can get you there relatively quick. But I'm going to say before we get into the content that this speed of change, I'm going to ask you to exercise a bit of caution and care. You know, be respectful of 
the percentage of time to make sure everything it fits into accessibility and disability standards that Vincent Raj and Johnny just talked about. You know, things like respectful of color palettes, screen reader sizes, or screen readers and, and uh, screen and form factor sizes, and these other accessibility traits that you know really make a lot of sense and and will draw you into you know delivering the right message to the right person at the right time. And it's critical to think about all of these different segments. But I want to take a quick step back. So agility, by definition, is the ability to change the direction of the body in an efficient and effective manner. Webster's definition, right? It's, it is what it is. What's interesting is if we take that definition and think about 2020, it really applies to business. And it should apply to business in general. But now more than ever, agility is key. I mean, we even have agile software and project deployment processes. The term agile is, is actually leading the way. So if you're headed down a route that looks fruitful, you want to be agile and understand where you're headed. And if it doesn't feel like you're getting there or metrics tell you you need to make a change, you need to be able to pivot and make that change. You know, brands that lack adaptability are going to be left behind when, when facing changes in the market and the environments and leveraging the right technology, whether it be commerce platforms, commerce websites, or marketing automation platforms, which, you know, frankly, as you go to market, all become tied together. Uh, you have to have those in place and they need to um, not only serve your end client, consumer, or reader's purpose, but there are other aspects like accessibility that we've talked about. So what we're really talking about is ensuring that technology and your strategy delivers the right message to the right person at the right time. And so there's a, a, just a quick, quick, simple stat I wanted to share with you. And, and obviously this is a so this is more of a, a B2C or business to consumer stat. Um, and, and by the way, you know, I don't believe that it makes a lot of sense to talk about sales and marketing in the B2B, the business to business, the B2C, business to consumer, and D2C, direct to consumer lights, um, in great differentiating factors. Because the reality is people are buying. There are just different buying processes. Uh, B2B often in, includes teams. The shift to a D2C becomes those uh, you know, product creators and product manufacturers delivering those goods directly to the end consumer. And then, of course, you know, the business to consumer is the common retail uh, model that we often hear about or, you know, merchant the term merchant starts to, to come into effect here as well. But 42 percent of shoppers, again, 42 percent of all shoppers, you know, it sounds B2C and tend to shop online more, you know, regularly post pandemic or post crisis or yeah, I will call this this rapid digital transformation. So um, for me and for Dot Digital specifically, because we're a marketing automation provider, you know, email still is king and there's a lot of stats that back that up. But as consumer behavior changes, you know, regularly, you know, we want to make sure we're adapting. So email isn't always the only channel that we want to work through. So I hope I didn't lose you there. What we're talking about, people's habits are changing. Everything is in flux, and then we may never go back to the old way of doing business. In fact, there's probably zero chance we go back to the old way of doing business, um, educating and buying as um, individuals and teams of buyers. So let's think about how our market changed and what, why agility is so important. Well, agility is going to deliver the contextual messages that your database, like your database of, of targets, your database of clients that is highly segmented, what that demands, it will help you replicate kind of that in-store, at trade show, roundtable, whether it be face-to-face -face or, or digitally and fundraiser experience that you're used to. Automation is key. Data provides the power to automation. Getting to these other channels is really important. Um, what you don't want to do is have all of these pieces at play and have to worry about accessibility and disability standards. So what do we mean by that? What we mean is leverage your technology or leverage technology that includes these as core functionality pieces and invest in the little bit of extra time it takes to check those boxes and serve that right message to the right person at the right time. But let's look deeper. We're gonna talk about the right channel and that's where your marketing automation platform integrated to or directly in, in cohesion with a e-commerce site can come in handy. So you know, 
stats don't mean a lot because they're oftentimes not absolutely perfect for your individual business. And that's nothing new. But as we think about right person, right message, right time, right channel, you know, people are changing the way that they're interacting with us and inboxes are more crowded than ever. So we want to make sure that we understand how we switch up our strategy and move to a more personalized omni-channel approach. Now it is proven by the Aberdeen Group that companies with an omni-channel strategy retain 89% of customers. And you're probably saying, hey, Dan, you just got done talking about marketing and sales. And I want to pull back for a second and talk a little bit about what we mean by marketing and sales systems working together to share content, to deliver the right message to the right person at the right time through the right channel. We aren't just talking about net new sales. We aren't just talking about brand um, management, brand strategy. We're also talking about existing customers. We're talking about elevating wallet share. We're talking about retaining customers in complicated business to business scenarios that have these incredibly complicated relationships with you and you being able to deliver content at the right time in the right channel to them becomes really, really important. It's, it is arguably more important to be able to identify the pieces of data that help you retain customers and identify when, as an example, churn, a churn metric or two metrics start to indicate in a negative, in a negative direction that you start to understand how you deliver content to them, not just calling through a customer service agent, but really thinking about that retention being a play through your marketing automation platform, through that content that you're delivering um, back to those individual uh, existing clients. So when we talk about these channels, which we're going to move into right now, I really want to challenge you to think about why it's important to layer this across the entirety of your business and not just focus on filling the top of the funnel or an account-based strategy in marketing or a sales cycle, but really think about this as the customer life cycle from beginning to end and how you take what at the end of a first initial purchase becomes more of that life cycle value creation that where you're providing content to drive revenue over and over and over again. So before we jump into the channels, I just want to draw back to the disability and accessibility piece. You know, um, regardless of channel that you're that you're engaging in, your UI, the delivery of the content, how people consume your content, your technology should cover a few really basic things. And I'm going to leave color palette out for a minute because we're going to talk about that in a little bit of detail on a couple of these channels. But really think about the optimal use of screen space so you can focus on your content. Real simple example. When we have email, like our platform, the engagement cloud from Dot Digital, we're able to show you as marketers and sellers and folks generating all of this content, what does an email look like on all of these, all the different form factors, that being an iPad, a phone, a laptop, through different browsers, what does that look like? So it's really important to think about the different ways people consume your content as well. Um, your technology should be able to reduce distraction from control. So why is that important? That's important because if you think about screen readers and, and folks with um, limited visibility capabilities, they need to see your content. The controls are easier to find, but the content is king um, in more ways than just brand marketing. Uh, leverage data density for smaller screens. That's something we do at Dot Digital in our, in our new UI design that um, is slated to come out in the near future, continues for our end users to just have data density capabilities that allow you to do things on smaller screens as a user of our platform, not just a purchaser, not just our users, customers, but like our actual users are going to have better um, accessibility capabilities because this is important to us. And, and we firmly believe that that's important. And then you just want to provide, at a minimum, access, web accessibility for your users with visual impairments. And, and I'm just going to say that as a minimum. You have to understand what alt tags are, as which was, you know, which was just discussed before my presentation started. We have to understand that screen readers are providing your content back to folks that can't see it. So I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but it's really important that you take this into consideration. So without further ado, we're going to talk about these five channels. 
Um, email. You would expect a marketing automation provider to talk about email. And you know, email makes a lot of sense because more folks are at home, more folks are on multiple devices, and they're consuming more messages than ever, or at least we're delivering more messages than ever. Um, the consumption is really on your content. But there's a pretty broad stat that I'm going to share, and that's you know, over $42 for every dollar spent is an ROI, is ROI you can see for, um, for email marketing. So whether that absolutely fits in your model or not, and that's the Digital Marketing Association you know, sharing this ROI figure, um, it's going to highly depend on the type of email marketing that you're doing. This is clearly a high value, high content driven, very targeted uh, email marketing campaign that we're talking about. But email is unrivaled in terms of ROI. And that's why we talk about it. It's why email is the backbone of most marketing strategies. At the end of the day, even though you're filling the top of your funnel through a commercial on television, an, a, an ad that appears in, in a, somewhere on a web browser, at the end of the day, you need to identify who that person is and be able to communicate with them. Email is almost always the way, at least currently, that folks are, communi are asking to be communicated with. Um, you know all of that. You know, I, I'm probably repeating a lot of things that you know, but I just think it's important that, you know, if we think about email, let's talk about it from a refining and optimizing perspective because it can be so effective, but it needs to be taken seriously. And whether you're new to email marketing or even using it for a while, there's an opportunity for you to kind of double click in and uh, to use a technology term, you know, double click into what you're doing and, and take a new look at how you're leveraging email, uh, which means your strategy needs to be geared for success. So, Take that step back and your data needs to be organized. At the end of the day, your email messages are targeted, personalized, and compelling. That's key. It fits in a broader strategy. Email is a channel based on screen size, based on readership that can deliver messages. Now we're going to talk a little bit about um, just a quick bullet here. I'm going to pull all these bullets up on screen so you can see them. Um, and here are just like six easy things that you can think about when you're leveraging email. And um, for the sake of the accessibility and disability topic, I just want to continue to remind you that if you're not using technology that already allows you to, to mark up things like layouts, um, you know, alt text and content for screen readers, you're not using the right technology. Uh, you, you need to be able to leverage technology that helps you get here. It's, it's also important to stop sending emails quite tactically from do not reply. Um, it's really important that you do that for, for a very singular reason. Feedback's important. As an end consumer, if I get a do not reply email and I have a question, why do I need to navigate to someplace else to ask my question. So do not reply is kind of a dead end zone. We highly recommend not leveraging do not reply aliases to send your um, emails out, especially from a marketing perspective. There might be arguments for some of these end of purchase uh, scenarios that we see or opt outs that you see, but definitely from a marketing perspective, stay away from do not reply. Get smarter with segmenting your data. You know, but that the tried and true saying is data is king becoming more and more important. That's why you have the ability to leverage AI across multiple types of data sets and really be creative about the segments that you're creating. Um, when we say get smarter with segmenting data, that's not just demographic data. It is also leveraging like your commerce data or e-commerce data. You know, our platform integrates with three major commerce platforms straight out of the gate, several ERM platforms, or CRM platforms, imagine being able to build segmentation as a marketer and really focused on personalizing messages to very specific segments. Really important. Um, ask your audience. So when we talk about asking your audience, this, this can dovetail back into segmenting data because we always want to be you know, building or validating or updating the data that we have internally on our audiences because it makes us smarter. It gives us key indicators of where we want to no message in the future and, and what type of pockets are um, folks that are, we are winning uh, as customers and are losing, not as customers. Right? It gives us good line of sight into to what that happens. Really think through your data model. When you ask your audience, ask them for information that is compelling to your business. Uh, highly tactical, but super important. Don't sleep on your subject line. 
It needs to be compelling to the point and optimized. It can be personalized with you know, really good marketing automation platforms. It shouldn't be general. Uh, and then to feed back into the data side, use surveys, gather feedback, really important. Uh, it, it raises the level of engagement that you have with your audience. So email, channel one, makes sense. Something that almost everyone's using. Take a step back, think about how you can uh, reuse email. Maybe it's back into email marketing through your current client base. And then being smart about the technology capabilities that you have with your email marketing or marketing automation platform. But let's skip to SMS. So SMS, clearly another channel um, delivered via text to a phone, um, requires no internet connection because it can be handled through the existing phone line. I'll give you a statistic that you probably don't know. In 2020, 23 billion text messages were sent daily. 23 billion text messages were sent daily. There is absolutely a digital shift to SMS that is starting to happen, that accompanies email in a communication channel. At Dot Digital alone, on Black Friday in 2020, we sent 5,721,000 SMS messages. Black Friday alone. Um, our, our marketing automation platform supports SMS native to our platform, including email. Uh, we don't have to go to a third party. So I just want to share that because it allows you to build these um, very specific, what we call automations, which could be you know, your, your complicated chain of events and how you deliver your messaging, almost like a workflow, uh, SMS delivered through our platform. What's really unique about SMS is that it delivers you know, a near-perfect engagement score. It's pretty much impossible to beat because if you think about it, you know, folks check their smartphones 150 times a day or more. Um, I'm almost 50. I know I do that. I can only imagine how many times my son or daughter who are middle schooler and high school pick their phone up and look at it. It's probably way more than 150 times or maybe they're just on it the entire time. Um, accessibility comes into play here, by the way, because we're talking about a very different form factor too. SMS is unique in that you're sending text, but when does accessibility really matter? It starts to matter when we think about where's my SMS message taking me? taking you likely to a web page or a web form, we wanna make sure that we think about that next destination so we're not um, leaving things out. So I, to me, this is, a, this is a highly important statistic to understand. 98% read rate, 98% read rate of SMS messages. 90% are read within the first minute and a half or 90 seconds. Why, why is that important? People engage with SNS. So it's just, it's just different than other channels in that that phone vibrates. People pick their phone up. They can't help it. Um, really think about that as you think about when and why you use SMS in your, uh, as a channel to deliver your messaging. But you know, it allows you to incorporate really specific text messages that require calls to action you know, through wider marketing campaigns. You could, for instance, you know, include SMS order updates with a post-purchase email series, or you could drive online shoppers to your site through promotional SMS as part of a flash sale campaign. I get an SMS from a sporting goods company that I feel like I spend about half my paycheck with probably every other day, and it's a flash sale, and it's stuff that's relevant to me, which is super important because they know what I buy, and they're sending me to a personalized page that is specific to things that serve my family's needs. So I think there's a little message in there about data plus delivery through SMS. And just remember, you know, SMS can really be effective sometimes for a quick call to action. You know, folks wait till certain times of the day to check email. SMS is there on demand, you know, at a moment's notice. So, um, you know, I think one of the things that we see our customers do a lot at Dot Digital is leverage SMS on uh, you know some specific types of events. So if you think about you know occasions like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, bank holidays or national holidays, you know events like virtual events, SMS can be used there, and, and even using SMS for competitions. Um, you know it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to send a multi-step marketing or branding campaign through SMS because you're going to make your uh, consumers immune a little bit to your number or how that shows up in their SMS feed. So SMS is number two. Email number one, SMS number two. 
display ads. So um, design matters in display ads, by the way. And folks like DC Cap, when they talk about their inclusive design capability, this is when you're seriously be engaging a team like DC Cap to think about how do my ads play, not just in general to my audience or my, my personas or my uh, brand targets, but then how do I layer accessibility and inclusivity into what I'm doing with the display ad? So super important to think about not just the content of your display ad, but how it presents, who it's presenting to, and the relevancy and inclusiveness of that display ad. Um, you know, typically display ads are logged into a, a personalization trait. You know, you should definitely be personalizing um, any kind of ad that you're doing versus something more general like a banner ad. Uh, personalization, when done right, drives, you know, insanely exceptional uh, customer experiences to drive you know, optimal revenue. Remarketing complements other personalizable channels such as email. So it extends the journey beyond the realms of the inbox or SMS. You can do that all through display ads. The other thing to think about, you know, I want to keep drawing back to customer service or existing customers around retention or potential issues with maybe even longer life cycle customers is leveraging display ads for those existing customers to keep the products and services that they already have top of mind. Um, I think one of the unique things that I receive, because I, you know, this is completely relevant. Um, I consume content online through a subscription and, and I'll just call it, you know, a, I'll call it Netflix. And I actually get messages that are relevant to me in display ads specific to, to content I've consumed before, but something new to check out. Uh, makes a bunch of sense for sure. So there's a step that we didn't talk about, which is color palette uh, when it comes to display ads. Just remember that um, not everyone has the same vision capability. Uh, color blindness, you know, we heard the stat earlier, uh, uh, previous, you know, the, the previous presentation. You know, around males with color blindness, it, it's higher than probably most people think. So really think about the importance of, of color, plat, color palette here. But when we think about, you know, display ads, we're talking about something on a website. Really pretty simple. You want to com combine your display ads really into these other channels so they don't feel disjointed. Imagine if you had an SMS message that went to a end consumer that was relevant to an offer, they happen to show up at a site and that exact same type of content message is sitting there in a display ad. That's pretty powerful. I know you're talking to me. So I really encourage you to think about display ads as a channel that you can leverage in a, in a I don't want to say complicated because that, that means it's going to be hard. Uh, but a inclusive or holistic marketing campaign strategy. So display ads number three in terms of, uh, you know, number three of the five channels we should be thinking about. So let's talk about push notifications. So push notifications, um, for those of you that don't know, are different than SMS because push notifications prompt users to go to a app that is sitting, you know, on a device. So bring your storefront to the forefront of your customer's screen makes a lot of business sense, something you're trying to do all the time. Um, if you're working with digital devices and driving to digital online sales, which is exactly what we're talking about right now into your commerce site. You know, the great thing about push is that you're not competing with SMS and, and email for space. That message pops up and it takes you directly to the app and they can engage with your brand. And the key is it's your brand alone. But how? Well, here's how this works as a channel. You can urge your customers, you know, to interact with you through push notifications. You're urging them to download your app by communicating its benefits in email or SMS. And then once you get in, get the app downloaded, it changes your interaction with these individual, you know, customers or app owners that might not be a customer yet. Um, I, I almost always, for a brand that I'm, I won't say committed, but but very interested in or buying from, I will absolutely leverage their app because I find that the smart marketers that leverage their their apps deliver content as well as buying opportunity. And that that makes a lot of sense to me because I'm always looking for content. Um, why should I why should I be interested in not just purchasing something but returning to your site for more information? And it's you know highly targeted. 
Um, as an aside, there's a there's a whole psychology around push notifications and, and changing user behavior, much kind of like what I just described about how I interact with apps. We don't have a lot of time to go into that, but I would certainly encourage you if you're building an app and leveraging push notifications that you look up externally online, you know, the psychology of push notifications and how to really play into that. Let's maximize the effort that you're putting in place. You know, again, this isn't a B2C strategy. We're seeing B2B apps happen all the time. We also see apps that happen, you know, like at Dot Digital. Pre-pandemic, of course, we had face-to-face -face, uh, Dot Digital Summit, and folks would come from all over. We have, you know, a massive customer base in the thousands, and you know, folks would come in, and you know, email is not a great way to communicate with them. SMS isn't really a great way to communicate with them. I want to have an app that works. So, you know, leveraging an app to not just help folks from, uh, you know, understand an agenda of a summit, but tell them. You know, with a push notification, our keynote's about to start, or the after hour happy hour, or after hour um, special guest speaker is about to start. You can provide these notifications and then start to you know feed in all the other pieces that you want to share for a specific uh, campaign or task. So push notifications, channel number four to really think about. And the last one that I'm going to talk about is live chat. So live chat, a feature of Dot Digital. Um, I'm going to call, I want to make sure that we understand the difference between live chat and AI or bot driven chat. So we've all interacted most likely with both. Um, AI or bot driven chat is um, for the most part limited, um, can be highly complicated, but you're getting a set of canned responses that are trying to drive you to a canned or a um, predetermined destination. Live chat is very different. Live chat you know, in the real world gets you to a person. And that's important because if I, if, if we were at Summit, I'd be talking to you live from the stage today, right? We'd, we'd be having a, you see how demonstrative I am, you know, with my hands as I talk. Uh, live chat gives that personal touch to the communication you're having with your client base with or with those folks that are coming to your website and asking for more information. And this is really key, especially now. Not only do we demand you know, answers to complicated questions as buyers, B2B or B2C or D2C right now, but I need it right now on time, relevant to my conversation. And I don't wanna have to be frustrated by the same frustrations we've all felt going through an, you know, like a phone call to a service center that press two or voice response. I didn't understand that. Could you repeat? Live chat takes, starts to take a lot of that out of play with a real person. And, and frankly, that you know, like I shared, the customers demand that instant access. Uh, so Virgin Atlantic shared this stat around customers who have live chat. They convert at nearly three and a half times the rate of those that don't because they have very specific questions that get answered, you know, as quickly as possible. And it changes the way they feel about their brand. You know, it, that's a pretty compelling statistic. Three and a half times higher rate of conversion. That's a big deal. So let's talk about six reasons why live chat, you know, can benefit your business. And again, I'll pop all these bullets on the screen here for you to take a read as I'm walking through them. Um, but let's think about this. You know, from a marketing perspective, you can use live chat to collect data. Right now I build that data segment. I'm always supplementing the data about the um, personas, the people, the, the entities that I'm interacting with. It helps you build your marketing ecosystem and further you know, react or be agile to these individual personas or people. Um, from a sales perspective, it helps you usher them along the funnel. You can leverage live chat to move folks through the funnel, even, you know, small and incrementally, you know, end up boosting sales. It just will. If you think about the Virgin Atlantic stat we just talked about, three and a half times, you know, greater rate to, you know, to, to closure. It's a pretty, all your sellers would like that type of, a, of an assist from a piece of technology. You know, for customer support, it's um, it's really important for customer support, and and it, I'm, I can't overstate this. Customer support is cheaper, and I'm going to take the third and fourth bullet point. We're going to pinch these together for a second. When I have live chat in place, I can, as a support specialist, handle multiple chats at once. So certainly, there is a maximum number. But when I'm on the phone of a, tele, a telephony-based CSR, they can only handle one call. And it oftentimes can get out and escalation happens and that takes time on hold. 
It is cheaper to facilitate and customer support is better because the ability to answer questions is faster. And in fact, you know, Forrester suggests that the live chat sessions, they're almost 50% cheaper than phone chat or than phone calls. So if we let that sink in for a minute, you know, between three and a half time acceleration, you know, from a sales perspective and a 50% reduction in cost from phone versus live chat, which I'm not suggesting live chat replaces phone, by the way. But there are absolute points where inter interacting with live chat's important. And the other thing I'll ask you to think about when we think about customer support or sales is think about the different demographics and age for the, for the folks that are buying your product or products. Um, I'm not the same as a 20 something uh, single female that you know has a child. I, we're gonna need different levels of support. My point of this is the younger the demographic, the more they demand instant feedback. Um, they, they demand instant access and they want it their way. And that's okay because that's the way we built our world with technology. Understand live chat gives that to you. Uh, the other thing it does is it builds relationships quicker. Um, it's personal. You can't be personal right now, especially as folks are coming out of being, you know, in different stages of lockdown throughout the globe, like relationships matter. And even though, you know, we've gone through our ebbs and flows of having these relationships come back and then maybe back lockdown, depending on where you live, like the, the urge of having relationships with people that you're either have or are purchasing product from is important. And then it just flat boosts your credibility. Your visitors are going to instantly know that they're real people at the other end. It's not a bot. It's live. It's something that matters. So those are the five live chats, the fifth. So in summary, um, we covered a lot. Absolutely covered a lot, but um, real fast, mastering your suite of channels. I'm not going to revisit them. You know, like anything in marketing, and we'll call it marketing plus sales, you know, it takes time. You have to be willing to fail fast. You have to be willing to try new things, but you absolutely have to leverage a technology stack that it allows you to very quickly be agile and deliver personalized, content rich messaging through those channels to the right person at the right time. Just couldn't be more critical. And it's super important to leverage your agency like DC Cap to help build all of that integrated data flow back and forth and to understand how you can make that seamless and smooth, you know, for this digital customer experience. So with that, I want to say thank you. Again, my name is Dan Griffin. I'll leave my email up on the screen for you and here for a second. And Kathy, uh, I will jump back in, maybe take off sharing. We can go full camera. Any questions? Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dan, for the presentation. I mean, obviously a lot of really important information and in, in everything you went through and, and touched upon. And I think also much like Michael had mentioned earlier and how accessibility plays a role in just the optimization of the user experience and some really great points yeah. around that um, email and SMS and such. And just to follow up, I have a question. Um, do you have clients that are asking specifically for accessibility support? And what has your experience been with clients in regards to this strategy? So it's a great question. Um, we absolutely have that question all the time. In fact, it, more often than not, accessibility is coming into play. Uh, usually it starts with the, the, you know, the question on a form factor, like does my email or does my web page or my survey, how does it appear on my, on my, you know, my phone? versus how does it appear potentially on a browser that's delivered through a laptop? Usually that starts the, the questioning. And then, you know, we want to make sure that they understand our clients and, 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 you know, potential clients that there are these other factors that come into play. But we, I mean, it, the majority of our client, our, our smart marketing clients are asking, you know, straight away about accessibility and disability. The other thing, you know, that I would add is, um, they also ask specifically about our ability to build web pages within an experience and forms and surveys. And are they able to replicate accessible templates that they've already developed? You know, the answer is yes, but they're thinking about these, uh, you know, connected experiences and they want to make sure whatever they're doing specifically in a page they might build in dot digital, you know, represents all the time, money and effort to be inclusive that they've done with a firm like yours. Great. Yeah, I mean, I think really it does play back to just that kind of holistic approach and uh, how you're thinking of, of design overall. 
Um, yeah. Thank you again for, you know, the great presentation and your time with us. And it's certainly always a pleasure being a partner with Dot Digital and appreciate you, uh, you know, giving us some of those insights to think about a little bit more. Well, I appreciate you having us. And uh, thanks, Kathy. Really, really uh, enjoy sharing this type of content. We're passionate about it. And uh, if anyone has any questions, we're happy to take them. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, that's it for this month's e-session. Thanks so much for joining. And to our sponsor, Scotian.Digital. And you can watch more at dccap.com forward slash events. And our next event will be on May 11th, the DCCAP e-summit. So be sure to watch out for that. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch all our videos. Have a great day, everyone.